Okay, so for this section of the video, I usually do a little preview clip, but I really wanted to come here and say thank you guys so much for 600 plus subscribers. The fact that there are over 600 of you that are choosing to watch me and support me on this journey means the world to me, so I look forward to growing with you guys, and yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. If this is your first time, I usually don't sound like this. I'm recovering from COVID. I have no business filming a video right now. It's been a brutal, what day is it? It's been like 11 days so far, but I really wanted to film something um, specifically five things I wish I knew before starting Invisalign. Now, in this video, we're not gonna say things like It's invisible. Or Your teeth are gonna be sore for a few days. It's like those are kind of the obvious things and there are plenty of videos that do talk about that. In this one, we're gonna talk about the not so obvious things that they don't tell you about. Number one, if you're on a weight gain journey, it's not gonna be easy for you to maintain the weight with aligners. Because you have to keep your aligners in for 22 hours a day, you have to be super intentional with your time. You can't be snacking from dusk till dawn. Can't be like, ooh, I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna eat this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just keep it all in my bed so I can eat throughout the day. Because trust me, there are days where that's really necessary if you just wanna veg out in your bed. Just don't get crumbs anywhere. So you literally only have a two hour window to get all of your snacking and drinking that's outside of water done. On the other hand, what I'm about to say is not authorized by Invisalign whatsoever. I'm just talking to you person to person. If you are trying to cut down on snacking, I'm not gonna say if you're trying to lose weight, but if you are trying to cut down on snacking, Having Invisalign is like the perfect thing to keep you accountable. You're able to set time aside for this one snack that you're trying to have, brush your teeth, put your aligners back in, and keep the aligners in for the rest of the day if you want, or until your next meal. None of this is to say you can't snack at all. I think that's one of the best benefits of Invisalign because you could still eat whatever you want when you want. You just have to make sure you don't have your aligners out for too long and that you are brushing your teeth every single time you take them out to snack. You can definitely still be a foodie with Invisalign. It's just gonna come with its challenges and you have to better plan your meals and your snack times and your breaks and stuff like that, which we'll talk more about later, but you will be able to adapt once you get them in. Number two, once you get into the routine or rhythm of wearing them regularly, you might even start to enjoy having them in. Pre-Invisalign, I always had a tendency to clench my jaw, especially at night when I was sleeping, so I would wake up and my face would just hurt. With Invisalign, that's not really a thing. The Invisalign almost serves as like a mouth guard, um, an unofficial mouth guard, but it definitely prevents me from clenching at night, which is really helpful. The second thing is I am a cheek biter. Everybody has their weird fidgety thing and that's my thing. When I'm anxious, when I'm like deep in thought, I tend to bite my cheeks. With the Invisalign, obviously it's shielding my teeth, so I couldn't even bite my cheek if I tried. One thing I will say, because I've had COVID for the last like 11 days, I haven't been wearing my aligners as well as I should have. It just honestly felt really gross to have them in my mouth when there's just so much going on in my body. But yeah, I've been back to biting my cheek and yeah, it's, I don't know, it's satisfying for me, but I know that it's not ideal. And I know that when I go to get my cleaning, they're always like, oh, you're a cheek biter. I'm like, yeah, I know. Let's move on. I enjoy having them in. You might enjoy it too. Number three, you will need a system for removing your aligners in public. There's no way around it. You're gonna be out to eat. You're gonna be at a party. You're gonna be at work, some public place where there might be appetizers, some hors d'oeuvres if you will, team lunch. Like you're going to need to take your aligners out and I promise you, Going to reach for it while you're in public is just the cringe. I hated feeling that way in public, like, oh great, 
I'm gonna take out my eyeliners. There's probably gonna be a long string of drool that's just gonna embarrass me. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I've done the whole like, I'm gonna take the napkin and put it up to my face and then take them out process. Whatever works for you, do it. But just know, if you haven't yet thought about what your system's gonna be, like, we gotta start thinking about that. Obviously, it's really easy to just get up and go to the restroom if you need to take them out. Maybe you'll have a case that you can easily plop them in. Maybe you'll have a napkin. Definitely make sure to keep your environment in mind as well as the standards that they hold up. Like, you don't wanna be at a nice dinner and you just plop them out. Like, you need a system. You just do. Number four, your Invisalign journey is not fixed whatsoever. This is kind of a given, but I just wanted to make sure to say this again because I think it can be easy to be caught up by the length of your treatment plan that they give you in the beginning. Be open to the fact that life happens. Whether you aren't wearing your aligners as often as you would like, whether you had dental work done, which is preventing you from wearing your aligners, maybe your teeth aren't moving as fast as your orthodontist predicted, so you have to like wear an aligner for like an extra week. Try not to be fixated on or married to the idea of your treatment plan length. My original plan was for six months. I started my Invisalign in April of 2020. Yeah, my treatment plan ended up being around eight months, the first one, because there's a refinement period that you can do if your smile isn't as perfect as you want it to be, which is where I'm at now, but let's not jump around too much. But I was really disciplined with wearing them. Because this was like prime COVID time, my ortho sent me home with this like scanning box that I would use to like check in every week so they could see the progress of my smile and let me know if it was time to move on to the next set of aligners. I wanted to make them happy and I wanted to make sure my smile was improving and I just wanted to get through to the next aligner. By the way, I do change them out on a weekly basis, so that was really great. <coughs> Hold on, I think my nose is dripping. <coughs> now, if treatment length is important to you, like it was for me, definitely shop around and get quotes from different Invisalign providers. I went to three orthodontists before I decided on the one I was going to. The first ortho I went to told me my case was extremely complicated and that it would take up to two and a half years, like for my first course of treatment. So I was like, ooh, yeah, nah, just no, sir, sorry. So then I went to my second ortho and I believe they told me it would take like 14 months. By the way, the first ortho that I went to was the most expensive quote. The second ortho that I went to was like, you know, the second highest. And then I ended up finding my third ortho, which is the one that I ended up siding with. And it's funny though, because he told me like, my case was easy peasy. He deals with more complex cases than I was, which I don't even think my smile beforehand was that complicated. So it was very validating hearing that from him as well, but it just shows you that different dentists, doctors, no matter what you're shopping around for, they have different perspectives, different levels of expertise. That's not to say that the first ortho I went to was like a newbie, he wasn't. It's just important to shop around. With the last ortho that I went to, loved their office so much. They told me that I would only need these for like less than a year. And yeah, it's been great so far. At this point, it's been probably like a year and seven months and I'm okay with that because my original plan was six months. We did that, even though it took eight. And now we're just doing the refinements and getting my smile perfect. And I love that for me. Number five. The fifth thing I wish I knew before starting Invisalign, for all my people that I love the coffees, love the teas, going out and getting some adult beverages, yes, I'm right there with you. Those are all very much sippable drinks. Like, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that's just gonna rush through my coffee, I'm just not. If you're anything like me and you take 
at least two hours to finish your morning coffee. You need to drink quicker than you're used to or else your two hour slot will be gone before you know it. I am such a taster. Like I thoroughly enjoy taking my time with food, taking my time with drinks. I am always the last to finish eating, drinking, no shame in my game. This does not mean that you can't enjoy anything that you consume ever again with Invisalign but it does mean that there's gotta be some type of a trade-off. Like if I'm choosing to enjoy my morning coffee and breakfast for let's say an hour and a half, that means that's cool, I'ma just eat dinner within 30 minutes later. After that I'm good, like enjoy your food, however you gotta do it. That also goes for your snacks too, like whatever snack you're gonna eat, having it in a cute little package, that way you're kind of confined to what's there and you're not like constantly going back for more, that's all gonna help you. At least that's what helps me. So I do have one more bonus point for you guys. I just wanted to stick with the five because it sounds better with the title. Bonus point number one, you gonna need an accountability system. Nothing like too crazy, but whatever's helpful for you, do that. Wearing your aligners for 22 hours is so, so, so crucial to the development and progress of your smile. Like, I will show you clips of what my teeth were looking like prior to this moment, and I am so proud of how far they've come. Like, I feel so confident with my new teeth. I don't know, it's not for forever. You're not gonna have the Invisalign forever, so you might as well just do what you gotta do to make your treatment period length well worthwhile. But whether you have the at-home scanner, or you have your in-person checkups, or you just have someone that's around you constantly that can be on your case about them, having that kind of accountability is really important. And honestly, I'm so happy that I waited until I was like 23 to do this because I wanted to make sure I was at a really good, steady, good paying job before investing in myself like this. My mom could never afford braces when I was younger and she actually used to tell me that it'd be fine when I grew up because they would just get straight on their own. That wasn't the case. But I say all of that to say I work hard for my money and there's plenty of other things I could be spending it on and I'm choosing to invest in myself with my smile. So when you're paying for things out of your own pocket, you tend to respect the price tag a little bit more. So if you are also funding your smile, don't let it be a waste or do. And you can learn through that as well. I ain't here to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Invisalign is not cheap. Fun fact, I did do Smile Direct Club before I went to Invisalign. Um, that was when they first started in like 2017. So if you have questions or maybe you want me to do a comparison video, holla at your girl. If you found any of my tips useful, give me a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much again for 600 subscribers and counting. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet already because we are on the way to 1K. Please stay healthy, wear your masks, do whatever you gotta do to stay safe, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye guys. It's gross. It's just gross. Oh my gosh, you guys like my shirt? Only the real ones know. RIP Michael K. Williams. Long live Omar.